to discuss six syndromes have been for a long time, I think, uh, a disease entity that's very difficult to understand. There are several misconceptions, I think, that are out there about myelodysplastic syndromes that are important to clarify from the get-go. One of them is that myelodysplastic syndromes are a form of cancer. So many patients come to us without, uh, without having heard the word cancer before, uh, even when they have the more advanced forms, the aggressive, high-risk myelodysplastic syndromes. And they get very surprised and sometimes overwhelmed when they hear that this is a cancer. But we have several studies now um, over the last 15, 20 years that showed us that MDS is definitely a form of cancer. However, like other cancers, it could be on the more aggressive or less aggressive spectrum, depending on several um, risk stratification schema that we will be talking about. Uh, the second thing is that while MDS um, is a cancer, it doesn't typically present with uh, very uh, proliferative disease like leukemia, like with a very high white cell count, it usually comes in the form of what we call bone marrow failure. So the blood counts are generally low, and the main problems that the patients have are generally uh, complications or manifestations of low blood counts, such as infections from the low neutrophils, bleeding uh, problems from the low platelets, and anemia and its complications uh, from the low hemoglobin. So this is how usually MDS present. Another misconception is that uh, most patients with myelodysplastic syndrome die from acute leukemia. Uh, that's a misconception. Actually, only around one third of patients with MDS progress to acute leukemia. However, most patients with MDS will die from MDS and not with MDS. So it's a disease that definitely, unfortunately, kills many patients. And this is why it should be recognized and treated very aggressively. Myelodysplastic syndromes are generally diseases of older patients. The median age in the U.S. is 76 years old, meaning that most of your patients are going to be in their uh, eighth or seventh decade of life, and that imposes certain uh, problems in terms of how aggressive uh, the treatment can be and makes the use of bone marrow transplantation very challenging in most patients. And bone marrow transplantation is really the only effective way uh, to try to cure myelodysplastic syndromes. So effectively what this translates to is that most patients with myelodysplastic syndromes um, are being treated on more, um, more or less non-curative paradigms. In regards to prevalence for MDS, I think it's important for us to review what the difference is between prevalence and incidence, because when most people consider prevalence, they actually mean incidence. Prevalence is used by epidemiologists to describe the overall burden of a disease. So it would include both newly diagnosed patients and patients who are actually already diagnosed and being treated. So it could include long-term survivors of MDS, for instance. But what most people are inter interested in is what we call incidence. And incidence is the number of new cases over a given time period. And if you look at the most recent SEER registry data, the incidence for MDS is 4.9 per 100,000 people per year. And an interesting thing about MDS is that there's a close association between, between increasing age and increasing incidence. So if you look, for example, for patients between the ages of 65 to 69, it jumps up to 13.9 uh, per 100,000 people per year. And then if you look at people over age 85, it actually jumps up to 64 uh, per 100,000 people per year. So there is an increasing incidence with age and there's a difference between prevalence and incidence. And incidence describes new diagnosis, prevalence is both newly diagnosed and patients who have been previously diagnosed. It is important to know uh, that patients have MDS and we'd like to do a better job of diagnosing them earlier. There have been studies, um, uh, patient-based internet surveys, looking at when patients were initially found to have a blood count abnormality and when they were actually diagnosed with MDS. And on average, the patients reported that there's a six-year delay between the initial finding of them having an abnormal blood count finding and being diagnosed with MDS. And diagnosis at an earlier time point can be critical because um, there are some patients who could be potentially cured with allogeneic transplantation. And identifying those patients at an earlier time period could lead to improved outcomes and also for those patients do, that do not have cure as an option, um, diagnosing them earlier could mean an earlier time to start treatment and not as much time where they have symptoms 
um, that are affecting their quality of life.